everyone. Um, you've made it through first semester, the fall semester. Congratulations. I hope that you've learned a lot along this journey. Um, in the scholarly practitioner course, as you know, we've spent a lot of time really looking at your problem of practice and helping you communicate issues you discovered about your problem of practice to a wider audience. Um, through a blog, um, and it, you know, it's really critical that you're um, understanding the root causes of your problem, and I saw that many of you did an excellent job with your fishbone diagrams, where you really started to dive into um, the possible issues that are leading to those is problems that you identify, and now, of course, the natural next step is going to be to start focusing on a potential solution, which you um, began to do at the end of your blog um, with some kind of call to action. And that's where I want to um, jump in and talk with you about next steps in terms of the research process. So next semester, you'll be taking Educational Research 1. And in that course, you'll be um, having an opportunity to learn more about the different research designs and data collection tools, analysis, analyzing data, and also interpreting um, data. So John and I have been talking a lot about the best way to move forward with the dissertation. And as you know, this is a work in progress. And um, what I'm about to present to you now is still a work in progress. But I think we are getting to a place where we're feeling um, you know, much more comfortable with our plan. Um, and we see a strong alignment between CPED principles um, at you know, the Carnegie Project on the Educational Doctorate and the um, kinds of tasks that we're asking you to do. So last week we had an opportunity to meet with our advisory board and talk with them about our plan. The entire meeting really was devoted um, to the topic of research um, and what really needs to take place in an EDD program in terms of the re re research course sequence, but most importantly also in the culminating project of the dissertation. So what I want to share with you today is some of our plans. Um, and again, just keep in mind that this is all very much a work in progress, but I hope that you'll come to see um, the value of the approach that John and I are hoping to implement starting in the spring. Now, if you're listening to this and you're feeling like this doesn't quite fit where you were hoping to be, just have a conversation with John and I. We are more than happy to um, work with you. We are not saying that this is the be-all to end-all um, approach, but we think for most of you, in fact, I actually think for all of you, I think this um, framework is going to fit very nicely for the topics that you've identified. So let's, we'll talk more about it as uh, the semester um, progresses. But I, I know some of you are going to want to spend your um, winter break kind of getting a jump start on your topic, continuing with some of those action items you identified in your dissertation action plan. And I thought it would be helpful for you to know um, what our current thinking is in, in terms of the process. So when you think about, you know, the purpose of a dissertation, you know, there's several different things that we're trying to accomplish accomplish with our dissertation. You know, the first is we certainly want you to develop strong research skills that are going to serve you well as community college leaders. And it's important that those are skills of practice. So, you know, an EDD, again, is a scholarly practitioner. So John and I have thought um, a lot about what skills do practitioners need. And although sometimes fascinating dissertations may lead to very interesting um, findings and also, you know, may develop some very important research skills. Many students, after they graduate from the doctoral program, don't end up utilizing those skills. We want you to walk away with skill sets that you will utilize. And program evaluation, which is going to be the frame for the dissertation, we think is something that you will need um, as a community college leader. So having that um, research expertise that will serve you well in the world of practice is critical to us. The second goal of the dissertation is for you to develop expertise in a content area. And this is going to be within the problem of practice that you identified. So again, you may be changing. I know some of you already changed paths this semester, and that's fine. You can still continue to have that flexibility. But the sooner that you choose your path, the less work you'll have later, because we're going to be um, now paving the way. We're actually at the end of Educational Research 1 course. You will have a draft of Chapter 1 for your dissertation. So we'll talk more about that um, in a moment. So having deep expertise in some kind of um, problem and, of course, the intervention associated with that problem, I think can position you well um, as, a, as a leader in the field as, in addition to having the, the general skills of uh, research, you also want to have that content expertise. And then the third goal is for um, our program to serve the wider community college sector. 
So when you think about um, all of you doing this really amazing research, we want to make sure that the data and the findings get into the hands of the practitioners so that it can be utilized and um, be of value to both uh, the community college practitioners and ultimately benefit the students. So to that end, we're going to be pushing you, and you know we're, we're focused on public scholarship and creating accessible, actionable um, research so that leaders in the field can make good um, informed decisions about what programs, policies, or practices to implement, modify, or um, eliminate. So those are the three guiding principles behind the purpose of the dissertation. Now, as you know, CPED's model is all about the scholarly practitioner, and it's really important that you're um, investigating a problem of practice, but it's not just the problem. And I think that's where some of you kind of started and stopped in the fall, which is okay because you're going to have time to move to the next step. But it's really not just about why do we have this problem. That's a good first step so that you know what to do about it. But as practitioners, you're not just looking for information for the sake of information. You want information that you can act on and make change so that you can benefit your students at the end of the day. So we're going to be pushing you to move to that um, level, and you'll see, see that um, in the next uh, couple of research courses that you have. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this program evaluation as the framework for both our research courses and also for the dissertation. So program evaluation, we are really broadly defining this term as a systematic evaluation of programs, policies, or practices to inform decision making. Some of you may be familiar with the term in the assessment world that um, is utilized when colleges are assessing um, the effectiveness of a major. You know, maybe you're doing a program evaluation on history majors. Um, that is not what we're speaking about. We're really talking more broadly about programs. So it could be a professional development program for faculty. It could be a, a program that is direct to students. It could be um, a policy, um, maybe it has to do with, you, you know, um, different rules and regulations about who can enter, you know, maybe like dev ed, you know, what are the policies and practices about how students are going to get placed into dev, dev ed. Um, it could be a variety of things. So anything that is a program policy or practice um, is what kind of comprises this overall program evaluation terminology that we're using. So the way that John and I see this is, is we, we see you engaging your dissertation in a program evaluation. So first you identify your problem of practice, then you identify an intervention, which could be a policy, practice, or program, and then you determine whether or not that policy, practice, or program is working. Now, in some cases, you may be um, traveling down a road where it may be difficult or maybe even impossible to implement a practice. Um, for whatever reason at your home institution or finding another institution that um, will enable you to do that. So in those cases, we see that you can also engage in the dissertation process by conducting a program evaluation of a program that already exists so that you wouldn't have to do the implementing, but you would instead go in and serve as an outside evaluator, conducting a very thorough um, systematic evaluation of that program. And that could serve as a community service to the community college that is asking you to conduct that evaluation. So we see a couple of different options there. Now, the research methods um, courses are going to, you know, kind of give you the skill sets to help you um, be ready to engage in this process. And as you're doing that, you'll determine what kind of research design that you'll use. Um, it'll be driven by the program evaluation questions that you ask. Um, so it depends on what stage of the evaluation, and next semester we'll be talking a lot, in a lot more detail about what is program evaluation, what are the different stages of program evaluation, what questions do, questions do you ask at those different stages, and what kind of research design makes most sense, depending on what your question is. So you'll have time to figure all of that out in the, um, in the spring, but I do want to mention that we anticipate that most, if not all of you, will probably use either a multiple methods or mixed methods design, meaning that both qualitative and quantitative data will be collected and analyzed as part of the program evaluation. Now, in keeping with the, the public scholarship theme, we also want to ensure that you're going to be creating some documents. So what will differentiate this dissertation from other dissertations is, is you will also include um, 
brief for more accessible documents such as executive summaries, infographics, blogs, policy briefs, things of that nature. So let me show you a chart that differentiates the uh, program evaluation from the traditional dissertation. And, you know, this again is very much a work in progress. So I'm not sure if these chapter titles will remain as they are here right now, but I think the general um, kind of information that you have in, in the chapters will probably remain the same um, or at least be in there even if it is moved to a different chapter. So in the traditional dissertation that many of you are probably familiar with, you start off with the introduction where you state the problem, identify your research questions, things of that nature. Um, then you provide the reader with the background information and what is known on that topic. You move into your method in terms of how did you conduct your study. You present your findings and then you discuss those findings in the context of what else is already known in the field. Um, and you're going to see a lot of parallels between what we do in the program evalu evaluation dissertation. Um, but you'll also see some additional practice um, elements that I think you'll find to be um, helpful and useful. So the front matter will look very similar to the traditional di dissertation, except for we are going to ask for you to provide some type of executive summary or infographic, and you'll work with your chairperson to determine exactly what that will look like, um, depending on the nature of your um, topic and dissertation. Chapter one will be heavily emphasizing the problem of practice. Well, it already was focused on the statement of the problem, but here we're gonna ask you to do a deeper dive. You're gonna state the problem using that social justice equity lens. You're gonna provide information um, about the needs assessment that you conduct, um, root cause analysis, and the significance of the problem. Now, for those of you who are sticking with the topic that you chose for scholarly practitioner, you are in pretty good shape. You already have some information, clearly not a comprehensive look, because you only started to scratch the surface in terms of what's out there in the literature, but you do have some of the, the background knowledge already to help you with this. The review will not just be a literature review, but a combination of practice and literature review. And in some areas, the literature may be very um, minimal or non-existent, um, quite frankly, because we don't always have literature on all the practices um, that we're engaging in. So when the literature is more minimal, um, you'll have to um, amplify the practice component. And as you know, you can use empathy interviews and other tools of that nature to um, bring the um, problem to light so that we really understand the, the problem. And that's really the point of chapter one is to make sure that you are communicating to your reader that you have a deep understanding of this problem and you're creating a sense of urgency related to needing an intervention. So you'll begin to introduce the intervention at the end of chapter one um, and of course you'll define any terms and concepts that you'll be utilizing. And then in chapter two the, the focus is going to shift to the intervention. Now when you move over to the intervention, let me just get this up a little bit, um, you'll see you're going to start off with what is the intervention. So you're going to describe whether it's a program, a policy, or practice. And then you will also be conducting, basically, it's almost like another lit review, um, but here you're going to be relying um, on research and theory to guide why do you think this intervention is going to work, what evidence do you have, what's making you choose this intervention. Um, the logic model um, will also be. Um, displayed here and illustrated and again in the in the educational research one you're going to have an opportunity to discover what logic models are and how they're utilized and how do you create one but basically it's a, a process where you're looking at what resources are you going to need for this program what will this program look like what are you expecting to happen as a result of this program and how do you know that that actually translates into the positive outcomes that you're looking for so you'll be mapping out that entire model, and you'll see that's often used in grant proposals and other places. So this, again, is a skill set that will be of value to you as a community college leader. And at the end of Chapter 2, you're um, articulating the purpose of the evaluation and also identifying your program evaluation questions. Then in Chapter 3, you're going to do the method, um, very much like a traditional chapter, um, but it'll begin with a positionality statement, which recognizes that recognizes that all um, research is biased and is not objective, so you'll kind of make front and center some of the biases and the lenses in which you'll be using to analyze and engage in this program evaluation. You'll discuss what type of model you're using to um, evaluate the program, the design that you're using, why you selected that design, who is involved in the study, what setting that study is um, being conducted in, um, an overview of what tools, both the quantitative and qualitative, for data collection and how you analyze those, 
And then another part that's a little unique is the economic evaluation method. So it's critical. Um, you can have a, a phenomenal program, but if it costs too much money, it's, it's impossible, it's not feasible to actually implement, it's not going to be of value to the community college sector. So it's going to be important for you to also include the economic evaluation um, in your method section as well. So how do you plan to assess that? And then in Chapter 4, you'll basically be presenting all of the evaluation results. Um, so you'll go back to your research questions. You know, what were your program evaluation questions? Um, we want you to disaggregate that data whenever possible and to include the economic um, findings as well as the overall findings. And then in Chapter 5, you also have your discussion, um, but here's where you'll um, summarize your key findings, talk about the limitations and most importantly the value of those findings, and then you'll be making recommendations. And those recommendations will be based both on the effectiveness of your program and the cost elements um, that you analyze. You'll provide some directions for further research and evaluations, and then um, sum, up, sum it up with a conclusion. Now, um, the public scholarship note is that we see a few different ways that you can move forward with this. So there may be opportunities for you to be um, briefer. You know, so if you look at chapter one and two, for instance, you might be able to have, uh, you know, it might be a, a more succinct chapter where it really is maybe even ready to be published into a journal article, um, but you would still need to provide depth of knowledge and to the reader, so you can do that through perhaps an extensive annotated bibliography in the index, or appendix, I should say. Um, if you want to write the traditional dissertation, which has more longer comprehensive chapters here, that's fine too, but then we'll probably be asking you to identify um, and create some additional um, accessible documents, um, that are more accessible. So if you have the traditional comprehensive chapter at the end of the dissertation in the appendix, you'll probably want to include um, some additional infographics, um, executive briefs, policy briefs, things of that nature. You'll work with your um, chairperson to figure out what pattern or what um, choice you'd like to use there. But the idea here is, is that um, we want to make sure you're all walking away with a dissertation that adds value. Um, and that builds your research skills and your content expertise. So we hope that this will work for all of you. Um, if anyone is feeling like it's not quite aligned with what they're doing, again, don't hesitate to read out, reach out to John or myself. I'm more happy to have a conversation with you. And we are not saying that this is the only way that you can go, but we do think that this will be the best way for most, if not all of you. So anyway, I hope that that provides you with some background information about where we're headed. Um, John and I are hoping to get the um, syllabi out to you um, shortly, so hopefully at the end of this week or early, very early in January, you'll get to see that. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks.